Hello everybody, I'm Matt from Megala Mobile, and today we're going to be taking a look at how you can make a fast and easy 2.5D rotating tower level using Unity. This is a similar effect to those seen in games like Mickey Mania or Porky Pig's Haunted Holiday, but instead of using 2D animated sprites, we're going to be using textured 3D cylinders and get a great looking result with minimal effort. Ready? Let's jump right in. First up is opengameart.org. I'm going to get some assets from my game. I'm going to need a texture for the tower. I'm going to use this tree texture because it's seamless. And I'm also going to need a character. And I'm going to get this one from the Pixabay. I'm going to go for this little pig here. I'm going to provide links to both of these in the description if you want to make your own. There's also going to be a link to the whole project as well and a test game you can play yourself. So once you've opened Unity up, I've called this project Rotating Tower. First thing I'm going to do is set my camera to orthographic because it's going to be a 2.5D game. I'm going to add a cylinder to the scene. Once your cylinder is in the scene, you can resize it to the size that you'd like. Make sure it fills up most of the screen. And then I'm going to go to 3D mode to have a little look at it. Make sure it's all the right shape. Once you're happy, you can then go back to 2D mode and rotate the cylinder by 90 degrees in the X axis so we can sort of look down at the top of it. It is looking a bit plain though, so I'm going to add the texture that we downloaded earlier to the cylinder. To do this you import the sprite and then create a new material. I'm going to drag the sprite onto the albedo map on the texture and knock the smoothness down to zero. You can then drag the material onto the cylinder and it coats it in the texture as you can see here. Next I'm going to add a branch so I'm going to copy and paste the cylinder that I already have and resize it, rotate it back by 90 degrees to zero in the x-axis and sort of stick it out here. Attach it to the cylinder game object and then uh, you can see in 3D mode, or if I hit play, that the cylinder is sticking out of the tree, almost like a branch. Because I'm going to be using the same cylinder repeated around the tree, I'm going to take this opportunity to resize it and make it look exactly as I want it to. I find it a lot easier to scale the object if you detach it from its parent game object. But once you're happy with the size of it, you can rename the cylinder to branch so we know what we're dealing with and I would like a way to differentiate it from the tree. The way that I've chosen to do this is by having a separate material for the tree and the branches. So to do this, I'm gonna create another material. I'm going to be using the same 2D texture, only I'm going to adjust the color to make it a little bit darker, rename the cylinder to tree, and I'm ready to start attaching my first script to the tree to make it move. So this is the first one I'm going to be using. It's called my tree rotate script and it's going to need a public float speed. And rather than using the update method, I'm going to be using a fixed update. To get the tree to move, I'm going to need a float move horizontal equals input dot get access horizontal. And then I'm going to say transform dot rotate in the brackets zero because it's not moving anything in the X direction. Move horizontal times speed in the Y and then zero in the Z. You need to remember to reattach the branch to the tree because otherwise it won't move. And then using the left and right arrows, you can see you can spin the tree on the spot. Now this won't be much of a game with only one branch. So the next thing to do is add a bunch more branches to the scene. So I'm gonna rotate again the tree by 90 degrees in the x-axis. And I'm going to copy and paste the branch that I already have, rotate it by 30 degrees in the z-axis. And then I'm going to decorate the outside of the tree as if it were the numbers of a clock. So I can speed this up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Each one's 30 degrees different because of course 30 times 12 is 360. I can then rotate the whole tree back by 90 degrees in the x-axis and you can see it's spinning around. All the branches are attached as children game objects to the tree and using left and right I can move it around. Before I adjust the height of the branches in the y-axis I'm just going to detach them from the tree and I'm going to move them up and down by 0.5 world units. And once they're in the pattern that I want them to be in, I'm going to create a new parent game object, call it branch section, which I can move independently. I'll then make that a child of a tree and copy and paste it a few times so I've got more of a place to work with in my level. I can then copy and paste the tree and not the children and create a sort of top and bottom to a tree. I then take the opportunity to test it in the editor and it's looking perfect. So now it's time to add a character to the game. So I got the pig from earlier, I'm going to set that to a sprite, 2D sprite, and then I'll be able to drag him onto the scene and reposition him so he looks like he's in the right place. So I do that by moving him towards the camera in the z-axis, uh, placing him in the spot that I want him to be able to play in, and resizing the character. I'm going to add a rigid body, not a rigid body 2D, and also a box collider. Again, not a 2D box collider, this is a 3D box collider. 
which I've going to set behind it so it can interact with the branches. I can then resize the box collider so he takes up the sort of space that I want him to. I'm also going to constrain the rigid body in every angle and also every position with the exception of the up and down Y vector. Giving that a test in the editor, you can see that if I move the tree, he will fall off, which is the exact behavior I'm looking for. So now it's time to add a script to the pig. And here is one that I created earlier. Now this script handles the jumping for the pig. It also locks the camera to the pig's position. Additionally, it handles resetting the scene if the pig falls too far to the bottom of the screen. I've already covered how to make a character jump in one of my previous videos. So rather than going through that again, I've included a link to the script at the bottom of this video. To make the script interact with the scene, I need to set the branches tag to floor so that the script knows when it lands on a branch and give it a test. Unfortunately, when the pig falls off, the lighting seems to go a bit funny. Now there's a good reason for this and that's because the, currently the lighting is pre-baked in the editor. So if you go to Window, Lighting, Settings, scroll to the bottom of the Scene tab and deselect the final checkbox so Auto Generate is off, you can give the scene a try and you'll see that it starts off dark like it became dark when the scene was set. Select your light and adjust the settings so you can see what brightness you'd like the scene to be at. Change that in the editor and then when you play the game, the lighting will be correct. You can then take the opportunity to adjust the light to the angle that you would want it to be at. I'm going to change mine so that the light is at a slightly shallower angle so the shadows sort of creep off to the left in the way that I want them to. I can resize the pig to make him take up less of the screen so I think that would be better for the game. And then I can give it a little test and that's all looking perfect. It's going up and down just as I want it to but oh, if it goes down too low it resets too soon. I think that's a, an issue that I've had with my script there. So I'm going to go back onto my script and change the reset points to negative 15 rather than negative five. And when he falls, he falls a little further before the game resets. And there you have it. That's how you can make a fast and easy 2.5D rotating tower level using Unity. All the scripts are available in the description, along with a link to play the level online so you can try it out. I've also created a Unity package that you can import and have a play around with yourself. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, then please hit like, please hit subscribe, and let me know how you get on in the comments. Feel free to check out one of my other videos, or check out the trailer to my game, Subspace Shortcuts. I'll see you next time.